everyone, and welcome to another video from the baby shower series. Um, I thought this time I would go ahead and take you um, through the whole process of me creating some of the stuff that I do. Um, usually when I'm making something, I already have the stuff cut out, so all you guys see is everything's already cut out, sometimes it's already put together. Um, that sort of thing. So I thought this time I would go ahead and just share with you um, from, you know, basically start to finish. Uh, finish of the pro not the whole project itself, just this piece of it, because the rest of it has to be done at the baby shower. So we're just going to go into the Cricut Craft Room, and I'm going to go ahead and sign in here. So give it just a second. There we go. And then I was in here and it had locked on me. So uh, there is no project that I need to restore. So we're just going to go ahead and click cancel on that. It locked up on me. And that happens a lot with this craft room. <laughs> so. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, under my cartridges, because I have all of my cartridges linked, or most of them, um, I'm going to go until I find Create a Critter Cartridge, right there, and then we're going to hit this plus, which makes all these images bigger so you can see. I do want to apologize for the waviness. I don't know, I, the only way I can film this is by having my flip stare at the, <laughs> stare at my computer. I don't know how to actually film on my computer. So we're just going to come down here and find the monkey. Okay. First, I want to change the height to 11 inches. I want this as big as possible, but it will not allow me to cut out 12 by 12, or well, a 12 inch monkey. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about the craft room, not necessarily the cricket itself, just the craft room, there is, let me zoom in there for you, and one more time this way, <coughs> excuse me, okay, so there is this yellow border, and anything inside this border right here will not cut. So you have to be on the white specifically. So the biggest I can get this using a 12 by 12 mat is just over 11 inches. I could go out and get the 12 by 24 mat and do it do it that way, um, but those things are pretty pricey. <laughs> so I and I don't know how often I'd use one. So the thought of going out to buy the mat just for you know like two projects seems a little bit much, so I'm not going to. <laughs> Let me go ahead and zoom out there for you. Yeah, right there, I think it works. Okay, so we're going to go down here. We've changed the size of the monkey. We're going to go back to the monkey. Okay, and we're going to click it. Okay, now what I like to do um, is I like to have each layer of the image have its own layer on the mat. This way I, one, it doesn't lock up my computer, which it did in the last one, or the, my last attempt trying to show you guys this. This would be take two. Um, so I like to have each layer have its own layer on the mat. Each layer of the image, its own layer on the mat, that makes more sense. Um, this way I can see everything and I know, you know, exactly where everything's uh, positioned on the paper but also to make sure that everything image-wise lines up. And then I like to take my image all the way over to the corner. It will not let you go any higher up or any higher to the left or any farther to the left. So I like to have everything tucked in that corner right off the bat because then I know that um, once I'm all done, everything will be lined up. So I do also like to change the colors. Um, so that I know what um, what um, especially if I can change them to the colors 
of the paper that I'm using that helps keep reference. I was I was having a bit of a brain fart. I do apologize for any of the outside noise as well, you know, the band and the children out there. Um, it's so nice out. <laughs> the sun is out, the, war the air is relatively warm. I'm airing out my house. It so needed it. I'm, I cannot wait for warmer weather. So, I'm going to go ahead and change this one too. This way I just don't have to worry about doing it later. Now, you do want to make sure if you're doing separate layers for every part of the image that you click on each one. Otherwise, you're just constantly adding to the one layer. and For me, that's just a pain. So now we're going to go get the first layer of the monkey and bring that up. Now you can click or drag it. I did both this time. And then I just move it over, and then layer two. Oops, see, I almost messed it up. Click on that. And bring that over. Now that is not the darkest shade that I'm using, but it gives me the rough idea of what I've got. So that's the monkey. Now what I like to do is I'm going to zoom in wait for my computer to catch up. The freezing, I don't know if that's the craft room itself, the internet, my computer. Uh, yeah. I like, so, oops. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the pieces. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here to this little corner image here, this little arrow, which will move them all. As you can see. And I'm going to line it up so that it's just inside the yellow. This way I'm using up as much of my paper as I can, but still getting it all in there. I also do this when I have tons in there because I really can um, fill up my paper. Um, and all that means is you can, over here, there is a autofill function which is fantastic because I'll fill it up, but sometimes it leaves a lot of empty space and it does leave space in between each of your images. Um, so I will go through and sometimes shift everything over so I can get more on there. So I'm just, I'm using up as much of my paper as I can. So now that I'm just inside the yellow up here, I'm going to go down to the tail, that being the lowest point of the monkey or the farthest down. And then I'm going to there's this little um, icon right here which will stretch the image not only up and down but left and right as well. So I'm going to just stretch that down or stretch that until it is right above that yellow line. And that's it. Okay, sorry about that. My oldest came in to ask me a question and she's not necessarily quick with her questions. Um, so everything is all ready to go. I have everything sized the way I want it. I thought I would go ahead and uh, tell you my idea with the monkey. I plan to have balloons hanging, or not hanging, I plan to have balloons for the shower and I thought it would be cute to have the monkey holding the balloons. Um, the only downside, was that, or the only problem that I foresaw with it is that there's going to be a weight on the bottom to obviously keep the balloons from floating away because it's an extremely high ceiling building and I'm short <laughs> um, so we're gonna have the weight holding down the balloons but I didn't want the weight holding the paper and then the balloons holding the paper and essentially it ripping so I'm planning on having a straw or tube behind the hand here and then one down here by the foot so that the um, string can go through and the, the monkey can attach to those as well. And then the, in that way the balloons are tied to the weight so the weight of the balloons trying to float away is being held down by the actual balloon weight. Um, and then just a piece of string or whatever the balloons have tied on them um, will be tied around the monkey's hand so it really looks like the monkey is holding on. So that's my idea. 
I don't know if I'm going to be putting this image on the back, on the reverse side, um, or not, because I don't know, like I said, what the room looks like, but I will be finding out here at the end of the month. I am going up there um, to see, to spend some of my daughter's spring break, which of course is a week off of my my nephew's and my mom's spring break, so everybody will be gone. <laughs> um, so once I know like the room and where the windows are located and where I might want to set it up, we'll determine if I'm going to do a backside. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share with you, if I choose to do it, it is really simple. There's this button up here, it says flip. you got to flip up and upside down, right side up, or left to right. So I would just make a second copy. Let's just do the third layer here. We'd make another copy and we'd paste it right next to it. And then I just flip it around so that when, excuse me, this doesn't want to move. There we go. I would flip the image depending on if I'm using a smooth or a textured. The monkey, this darker part here, is a smooth paper, so it wouldn't matter if I flip this part of the image or not. This lighter one is a textured layer, so that one I would have to flip so that it would all line up. But it's as simple as just clicking a button. So in this case, I wouldn't have to. So once I put everything together, everything would line up. So you'd have front monkey, monkey face front and back, basically. The only thing I wouldn't have to double up on is the black. Um, but again, this is all depending on what the room looks like and how I want to go about it. So. so that's it. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it out. Um, I've already turned my machine on. It is already hooked up, ready to go. I just hit the cut button up here. And then it'll give me um, all layers separate, um, as well as uh, what kind of cardstock I'm using. And I, I hardly ever change this. It's just automatically on heavy cardstock. And then if I needed to, I'd change the depth of my blade and the pressure and all that stuff. I'd click down here to load my mat, which is not quite ready yet. I will get that ready in just a moment. And then once it's loaded, I'll just hit cut. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get all that stuff done. I will, once my mat is ready to go, I will show you how it loads and um, at least the first image being cut. And then once everything is all cut out, I will come back to you and we'll put the monkey together. Now, I have previously, and I'm going to go ahead and show you these, I had previously, because the, the original colored paper I was going to be using for the invitations, which I think I might have mentioned in the invitations, I had only found one sheet of. Well, in the last week, since I decided not to do anything baby shower related, I was going through all of my papers, and I managed to find at least ten sheets of that color I had been looking for. I was a little ticked <laughs> because I just bought paper and I didn't need to and I try very hard not to buy stuff paper wise if I don't need it and I had already looked through my stash so that irritated me even more so um, that was always you know I mean it was a good find because now I have it for another project if I so chose to use that color but the sole purpose of me going to all kinds of craft stores other than I'd like to go to them <laughs> was because I was looking for that specific color paper. So, um, with the one paper that I did find, thinking I didn't have any, I had gone ahead and cut out all the bows for the, for the small invitations, as well as these big monkeys. So I have the... I, I know you can't see the color because of the screen, but I have the bows. They're already sized to this size monkey and ready to go, but I thought I'd go ahead and share that with you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my paper ready, and um, I'll be right back to show you the first cut. Okay, so you can see that we are ready to go. I am flipped the monkey around um, just so that I could have that one going. Now we're going to go ahead and put the paper in. 
to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to go cut. Print the first layer. Make sure this is all lined up. Okay. Then we're in. And we're going to go ahead and cut this layer and then it's and then I'll be, um and then the rest and then I'll be back to put it together. Okay, so that is cut out. Let me unload the mat. I'll go ahead and show you. Now you see all the white around it. I didn't realize it that this was a white core paper, which is still kind of cool. Um, but I think I might be taking a marker around the edges. I haven't decided. But that's what the first part of our monkey is going to look like. Make sure you're zoomed out and everything. And I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting the other layers and come back to it. Alright. Okay, as you can see, we have all of our pieces cut out. And now we're just going to glue them together. I did end up changing um, the cardstock. Um, my other monkey, I had done this and put it all together and one forgot to turn the recorder on, but that was okay because it had gone horribly wrong anyway, so I had to cut everything back out. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use some uh, Tombow Mono Multi-Glue to glue this down. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do... I'm actually going to go ahead and do all the gluing onto here. This way I don't get glue in the eyes where I don't want it. Now normally with Tombow a little goes a long way. But since this is a big image I really oops, want to make sure that it sticks. So I'm putting quite a bit on, but I figure as long as I keep it to the center, should or you know relatively center, should be okay. That way it can just ooze out, and then you can see that it's starting to dry up a little bit where it was the thinnest, and that's okay. I'm just gonna go over those spots a little bit more. And then, but with the Tombow, see, I did the tape runner, or I did my ATG, didn't work. I tried using the Martha Stewart, but it all absorbed into the paper super fast that I didn't have a chance to, like, it didn't have a chance to stick. But with the Tombow, I have a few moments to get it lined up. So I'm going to be off camera here for just a second, just to make sure we... I can get this all lined up as best as possible. Oops, there we go. Okay, and the tail. And then whatever doesn't stick, I can go ahead and reapply the glue. Now, I had made some extra invitations, and I had used the Martha glue, Martha Stewart glue. And I use this jar to help press everything down. So it's, that's all I'm doing is I'm just using it to make sure that I get even pressure throughout. It is, you can see it is curling it. And we'll just flip it over. 
and go over it this way. Now I don't care if the brown is hanging off of the um, back because you know no one's really going to see it anyways. So and I can see that I'm going to need just a tiny little bit here. Okay, sorry about that. My youngest, or my oldest, decided to come down and talk to me. Okay, let's see. It sticks down so nicely, so nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the brown. After we make sure, after we make sure we have this going the right way. this I may need to go get another thing of glue. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do like a thin line around um like around the ears and the oops. Okay well that wasn't very thin was it? <clears throat> um around the smaller spots just so is... sorry my daughter coming down has thrown off my thinking the thinking train <laughs> um, yeah so I'm just gonna do like instead of the squiggles I'm just gonna do a thin line that way it doesn't go oozing out oops i go ahead and do one little bit more right there. Okay, I'm not. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna line it up. Again, probably gonna be off camera a bit. I do apologize. I just want to make sure that I get this as lined up as best I can. Oh, we're off a little bit there. I have noticed with all of the crickets cartridges and not I mean not just this one but with all of them they don't all even though they all line up once you glue them down they don't. Okay see I went a little heavy in that one spot. That's okay I've got an eraser. Give that a chance to dry, get some of the uh, glue off my fingers so I don't smear it all over the place. <sighs> and again, we'll take the bottle and we'll just press down and roll. To ensure that we get everything adhered. Okay, whoop. There goes the cork. Okay, you know. Now I don't have a white eraser that works. So this pink one does the trick nicely. And it, I mean, if nothing else, it just takes some of the shine off. I've got to get one of those um, adhesive remover erasers. Take our clear Winkastella 
and glitter it up just like the other one. And for this, we're just going to use a little bit of tape, I think. Um, I think I might officially be run out of my clear. Just doesn't seem to be coming out. There we go. And that's okay. I just, I don't want to use the regular glitter because that stuff has a tendency to flake off. So I don't need a lot, just, and I don't, I apologize if you can't see the glitter. Just a little bit of a shimmer on there. There's actually more on there than probably looks. Let me see if I can come around this way and get to capture the glitter. Yeah, right there. You can see it a bit. So we're just going to take our monkey. I think we'll go ahead and just use a little bit of Tombow, just a tiny bit. Right there. Oh, I am covered with glue. Eek. And then we're just going to place it on her head, and we're going to attach her earrings. I had decided which size I wanted to use already, and it's just the recollections, um, it's just one of these packs it comes with. One, two, three, four, five different sizes of rhinestones. So just gonna check to make sure that they are relatively spaced, or at least roughly in the same location. This one doesn't want to give. There we go. Does that look about right? Yep, I think so. Move that one up just a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. So we're going to go ahead and slide that one over just a little bit more. Push it down, press it down, and then just like we did with the other ones, we're just going to give a little bit of a sparkle to the eyes. That's it. That's it for our monkey. We're not doing anything real fancy. Like I said, I will have an end product once it is all done. Um, and now that I've done it this way and the other way, I know which way is better and, and how to do it a little bit simpler. So that's it. Thanks so much. Bye.